In this video, we'll show you how you can control the Canon CRN500 PDC camera with a Skahoy controller. The CRN500 camera has 15 times optical zoom, it records in 4K Ultra HD in 30p, and it also has very nice speed by zoom capabilities that gives you fine control when you're zoomed in. And it comes with dual pixel autofocus. This is a well-proven system from Canon's other cameras and it's a quite noticeable feature. It also has built-in ND filters that I really can't remember seeing on other PDC cameras and it has some nice IP streaming capabilities and supports RTMP, NDIHX, RTP slash RTSP, RTMPS and Canon's XE protocol. On the back you'll find HDMI, 3G, SDI, Genlock, Ethernet, IS422, USB and dual XLR plugs for your audio. We have brought the PTC Pro for our demo today and keep in mind that you can control this with any of our controllers. All the functionality you see also applies to the PTC Extreme, the PTC Fly, PTC Wiz and even a product like Airfly Pro. After looking at all of these wonderful benefits of the CIN500, let's look at how they are working out in practice with the uh, Skahoy controller PTC Pro right here. The PDC Pro has a camera selector on the lower row of buttons and since we have only one camera there's only one button lighting up today but as you can imagine having multiple cameras you'll just select them on the buttons here and everything adjusts. This is the joystick mm -hmm. and if you rotate it we'll be zooming so let's just try that and as I rotate I can also use it to do pan and tilt movement and one of the things that I really like about this camera is how smooth my PDC operation works and uh, that is um, really remarkable. Notice I'm, I'm zoomed pretty far right now and I have really smooth pan and tilt movement. Very important in houses of worship, lecture capture and, and so on. So that's a really, really uh, nice thing. Now that we are here, I also want to show you the focus. So uh, going to the uh, user menu one, I have autofocus enabled as we can see, and that is really great in this camera as well. But let's just disable it and imagine that we want to pull focus manually. So this is our focus knob. I can uh, turn it and you see that I'm pulling focus now on the camera. If you want finer steps, you'll generally find that in Skahoy controllers we have speed limitation and in uh, menu user menu 4, no 3, I have speed limitation on my focus. So let's just dial that down a little bit and that will help me to pull my focus in smaller steps to have more precise focus adjustments. This is true for all cameras that we implement with manual focus. You'll find such a focus uh, speed limitation feature in the controller as well to to hit the right balance right there. Now um, this gives me a chance now to uh, demonstrate preset recall and my selector right here has buttons for preset recall. I will press this one and it goes to my white shot here. If I press the second preset I have stored a few presets that I can now quickly recall on this camera. Really really nice. And uh, going back to this one, let's just um, make a new preset so I can show you how this is usually done on Skahoy controllers. So uh, we'll just zoom in over here on our brochure. All right, so I want to capture this. I just press and hold the button until it lights up green. There you go. So let's just test it. We go over here and if I go to um, preset number nine, I recall the preset I just stored. This is how easy it's usually done on Skyhawk controllers. In the exposure menu, you'll find the ability to go from auto exposure over to manual exposure and that provides access to iris shutter speed and gain values in cameras. You'll find that in many of the implementations we have done on PDC cameras. So that's a well-known principle. We go back to auto and then the white balance menu, kind of the same. You have auto mode right here. We can have indoor white balance. We can have uh, outdoor white balance. You see the change already in the picture, but we could also, if we go out here on the uh, white shot, um, see the um, global effect of this. Now we are in manual mode and in manual mode, we have red and blue gain, very classical PTC cameras. And uh, this allows me to, yep, there I just quickly shaded the image. I feel strong now because I had this control and I hit it <laughs> in the first try. That's great. I'm not an expert in that. Uh, but you also have typically uh, one push functions for white balance here and uh, sometimes um, there'll be other modes. In this camera you have uh, auto, indoor, outdoor and manual and one push trigger mode for white balance. 
moving on to color, we have matrix adjustments in here. So if you are um, a geek into uh, color adjustment, you can really go deep here with red, green, red, blue, green, red, and so on. And in this case, if you press repeatedly, you see that you are cycling through um, more layers of settings for the matrix adjustment all the way down to color level and color face and picture profiles here. We move on to image and we have gamma mode in here. So different uh, gamma modes the camera has to offer is available to us from this encoder. And we have master pedestal, black gamma uh, range and black gamma level on these knobs over here. So um, those functions are also available. If you want to know exactly what that is, like with many PTC cameras, the manual of the camera is the place to go. Our mission is when we do these integrations to give you access to all the specific features the manufacturers are giving you so that our controllers are like comparable to a native controller for the camera. And that's what you see when you see all these specific features for this camera broken out on the controller here. Once again, if I press repeatedly, I am cycling through multiple layers of the menu, giving me access to knee settings. Um, I can turn this onto manual. I can adjust knee slope and point here. And if uh, we move on, uh, we also have detail level, which is like sharpness in the camera and uh, noise reduction over here. Looking at the user menus, we have focus. We saw that earlier. And uh, we also have uh, auto exposure speed and exposure compensation that can be set on this menu. Here we can turn the camera on off. Let's not do that today. And we can even turn on the tally light. So on top of the camera, we have tally here. And mm, now you are probably thinking that I got you, Casper. Tally doesn't make sense on an encoder. It should be automated. And you know what? This can be done in the controllers. We have virtual triggers that will allow you to, to cobble the uh, tally on the camera to detecting the uh, selection on a, a video switcher, for instance. So it is possible. I'm just showing you that we have control of that parameter. And we can move on to flicker reduction, camera uh, group function, and uh, the speed limitation functions I showed you earlier. And then finally, we usually put in a menu with stuff like uh, IP settings and um, panel brightness and, and so forth. I could, for instance, uh, adjust some of these uh, settings here. You see the intensity of the buttons are adjusted here. And panel sleep time can also be uh, adjusted on the controller. The final thing we want to do is to just highlight the cruise control. And I think that is a really, I, I usually want to pitch it as uh, one way you can have like a slow zoom or you can have a slow pan uh, in any case. So let's just see what is cruise control really. Now imagine that I have um, the, the desire to kind of pan across the stage and with a camera like this that has so subtle movements like this, you see, uh, let's just get the camera started slowly. Oh, it's really, really smooth. That's great. I press the cruise control button and now for uh, seven seconds, that was the pre-coded time, it's just going to keep this movement and ne then it stops after seven seconds. The idea here is it gives you the freedom to change to a different camera. Get that in position by recalling a preset and then changing to it on your video switcher system or it will automatically stop after the preset seven seconds. This gives you more dynamic productions like setting your car on autopilot on the highway. It helps you to relax a little bit more and do other things. Of course, you're still focused on your production, that is. Now, we can also do a, um, a creep zoom here. So we are just zooming out slowly, keep that going until cruise control will stop it after seven seconds. So there are multiple ways you can use cruise control. This is how you can control the Canon CIN500 with a Skyhawk controller. And if you want to know more about what devices we can control, then head over to our device core page on our website. And we have provided a link in the description of this video to take you there real quickly. And uh, if you have any questions, then leave us a comment or send us an email. You should also click the subscribe button to stay updated on new developments we are doing and see other use cases uh, from our customers. Have a nice day.